All right, uh, good morning everyone. Welcome to this uh, Destiny podcast, uh, where we're going to hopefully enlighten you on how bringing voice into Microsoft Teams can enable a business to be more efficient. Um, it's really great to be here again alongside you, Artur. My name is Mitchell Barker. I'm the product manager here at uh, Destiny Belgium. And how about you introduce yourself? Thank you. Yes, I'm uh, Artur, Arthur, Arthur Deman. Uh, I'm uh, the team lead of the solutions engineer, sort of brief sales, uh, depends on what you call it, here at Destiny. Excellent. Um, right, I think we're ready to go. So we'll jump into it. Maybe just a few housekeeping items, uh, if I may. Uh, so the session will be recorded. So for those of you who uh, are uh, having to step out early or maybe for those who couldn't join, we will provide a copy of the slide deck and the recording afterwards. Uh, we also have an opportunity for you to ask questions. So inside the, the webinar, you will see a box uh, probably on the right hand side of your screen where you're able to type some questions. Leave those for us. We love to get your feedback. We love to get your questions. Uh, and if we can't answer them in today's session, yeah, we'll absolutely uh, send you a response uh, via email. The second thing is we really value and appreciate your time. So uh, if you stick around until the end, we'll give you an opportunity to uh, enter a competition to win some prizes. We've got some great Lotto Destiny jerseys and uh, a voucher from Bongo. So please stick around with us and uh, hopefully we can bring you some value and some answers in today's session. So what are we going to do uh, today? We are going to uh, just quickly speak a little bit about destiny. So I'll introduce you to who we are, our perspective on the market, uh, our understanding based on many client engagements, what the current state is, what people are asking for, uh, what employees and users are asking for, and especially when it comes to integrating Microsoft Teams into the telephony environment. So we'll share a little bit about what those options are, We'll speak about how Destiny is solving in an easy and simple way. We'll move on to a demo, and then we will uh, take some time to answer the Q&A. We have an hour uh, for the session, and so hopefully, if, if, if our timing worked out the way that we planned, we'll be, uh, we'll be uh, uh, on time. So firstly, for those of you who uh, may not know who Destiny is, we've made it our job to make communication easy. And we've done that quite successfully in the European market. We recognize as one of the leaders in cloud communication. We have over three, three million uh, users on our cloud communication platform. This is Destiny technology. So not third party software, it's Destiny owned technology. And in the case of Destiny Belgium, we're a licensed network operator, not only on uh, 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 fixed line services, but mobile services too. And then perhaps, in line with the theme and, and what we aim to do today, what's more important is where we sit in the Microsoft ecosystem. And I'm proud to say that we're a number one Teams integrator. We have over a million users using Destiny technologies to voice enable their Microsoft Teams environment. So I think we're uh, in a fairly good uh, position to, to be able to uh, bring you some guidance uh, on uh, uh, how to do that in your organization. Why we're on the market is quite simple. We know that business communication has changed, it's evolved, uh, and in fact, that landscape is completely different to what it was just a few short years ago. There are two aspects that we generally look at. The one is what do we do and what are the dynamics that are faced by the typical employee or the typical user of technology today? I think what we do know is that work is no longer a place I go to, work is where I am. I might not carry the normal business hours. I might be uh, more driven by outcomes rather than timekeeping. Um, but more importantly, you know, I might work from an office. I might work from the car. I might work from a coffee shop. I might work from a co-shared space. You know, these are all places that I need to have access to these communication tools. But not only that, when we talk about the communication tools, we're also talking about the different types of tools that I would use. Maybe I have some software on my PC, I've got an application on my mobile phone, or maybe I'm just using my, my mobile network. Um, I could have uh, a fixed phone, a VoIP telephone uh, uh, at my desk. Um, and of course, then we, we, we communicate not only in voice, but you know, we have video meetings too. So when we look at what's involved for just an employee to be able to be efficient and be productive, there's 
I don't want to say the odds are stacked up against them, but even in that picture, it could be uh, quite a complicated environment to, to navigate. So on the one hand, that's how we understand employees are working today. And this is even relevant to us uh, here in Destiny Belgium. On the other side of that, what we have is our customers, and our customers have become increasingly demanding. Uh, we're, on, we, we're very much in this uh, on-demand uh, economy, so we want answers now. We want, we're expecting personalized service. We're expecting our suppliers to listen to, uh, uh, listen to our problems, to understand our business, uh, to be responsive, and uh, to be able to provide solutions. Those are the dynamics. And that is what we have to uh, contend with uh, as, uh, as businesses operating in today's landscape. So our job is to make all of this as simple and as easy as possible, not only for users, but for customers too. And so hopefully in today's uh, presentation, you will also see not only how we enable Teams integration, but how we bring all of this together. And, and bringing that all together is where you unlock uh, the uh, uh, the feature and efficiency gains that uh, you know that we're uh, uh, hoping to uh, share with you today. The other thing that we see in the SMB market, and I've listed six here, but in fact these are the six minimums. There might be more, uh, uh, but we see this in most of our engagements. Is that we have a mobile a network provider, someone giving me my SIM cards and maybe my devices too. I would have an on-premise uh, phone system or on-premise PBX, of course, connected to that PBX. We have our fixed lines. Then we've got a little bit of Microsoft Teams because we use Teams for internal communication, collaboration, and meetings. Uh, and yeah, well, back on the left, you know, it's 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 the traditional phone system and uh, and my mobile phone, uh, uh, you know, that I use for uh, for voice interaction. I have a chatbot because we know customers not only want to be able to call us when there's a problem or a request or when they would like to get more information, they want to be able to visit our site, they want to be able to interact, and reach customer service or frequently ask questions through a chatbot. And then we have our social media integration. And then on top of that, there's the big question of, well, where are we storing our customer data? And what we're definitely seeing is a big drive towards cleaning up, uh, and making sure that CRM now delivers on the role and the purpose uh, that businesses intend to. Um, so uh, CRM is a big, uh, a big, a big thing for us. So if you think about these six different platforms, what this may mean to your organisation is six different suppliers. That may mean that that's six different invoices. It may mean that that's six different service level agreements. And the challenge is that not all of these are integrated or not all of these speak to each other. And so when you need to start getting people to talk to each other, you know, that's uh, uh, the success of making the seamless environment is very much dependent on everyone's understanding on how these different platforms can in fact work together. And that's a challenge. So Destiny makes this simple. So what do we bring? We bring us an all-in-one business communications platform. Um, so we take all of these elements and we become the single provider. We become the core for this environment. So you can bring um, the, you know, these external applications or you can leverage the applications that Destiny provides. But we bring all of this together, which means one supplier, one invoice, one service level agreement, one point of contact. And more importantly, we help you to achieve your objective, but from less applications, uh, you know, so you don't have to jump between applications. So that is... Uh, really part of our uh, mission here in, uh, in Destiny. But of course, why we're here today is really around the efficiency gains that can be unlocked in enabling voice in Microsoft Teams. And the world that we know, of course, is that you know, we use Teams for internal chat, collaboration, and meetings. And I have my phone system that's separate. You know, what are the options that we can bring these two worlds together? That was about Destiny, but who are you? Um, we uh, are obviously delighted to have you here today. We are making some assumptions, but these are fairly uh, 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 informed uh, uh, conclusions. But you either have an on-premise phone system currently, so you fit in the category of I have a separate phone system and Teams, and you're starting to uh, look at the options. So how can I actually bring these two together? Or perhaps you're already using Microsoft Teams with some telephony capabilities in it, and maybe you've 
identify that there's some gaps uh, that you find. Maybe the analytics doesn't bring what it needs to, or maybe you want to add some customer engagement to that, or you'd like to have some extended CRM integration. So even to existing Teams environments, there may be something uh, that isn't quite working for you. Uh, yeah, I'd also like to say that that's where Destiny can bring, <clears throat> excuse me, a solution. Or um, last but not least, we, you know, you maybe are operating in the industry already, but maybe new to the telephony environment, or you're an IT integrator uh, looking to break into the telephony market or enriching your Microsoft uh, uh, services and solutions with other value added applications. And of course, we welcome uh, the engagements from the partner community uh, too. As I mentioned, uh, the Teams solution, where we are and having a separate phone system and having a Teams integrated for telephony is a, is a, common, uh, you know, a, a common challenge uh, and requirement that we, that we see. And actually, when we think about it from a user experience point of view, uh, there's only one thing that changes here. Users are used to seeing the left-hand view for Teams. That's the Teams that we know. And I can't do any internal, excuse me, I can't do any external communication from that. In other words, I can't make an external call, I can't phone a supplier, I can't receive a call from, uh, you know, from a customer um, if they dial in my fixed line number. And so the teams that we want to get to is where we have this dial pad. If we have the dial pad, it means, yeah, then we're, I'm able to make external calls and receive calls. Unfortunately, uh, from a user point of view, it's quite simple. But enabling that environment is actually quite difficult. And without going into too much technical detail, I think the questions and the considerations really are around where do I start with this? And so uh, if you've looked into the Microsoft ecosystem, you might uh, be familiar with the terms that I've got uh, on the screen at the moment. So that is Microsoft offering the ability to voice enable Microsoft Teams using either calling plans direct routing or operator connect. And I guess the real question is how much of this do you want to put into the hands of Microsoft? Maybe you go all in with Microsoft and calling plans could be something that's interesting for you, uh, but uh, maybe you want to uh, uh, you know, go with a different uh, uh, provider and they've got a value proposition that best meets where your business is at in your journey uh, or your, your evolution in, in the uh, modern workplace, and maybe direct routing is an option or operator connect is an option. I think the considerations around this are twofold. Firstly, we know that with all three of these options, you get the dial pad in Microsoft Teams. So user experience, we tick that box and we say we can deliver what our users want because it's a simple solution for users. When it comes to you, um, these are, are fleet managers, IT managers, uh, customers who uh, have this Microsoft Teams domain. When you're looking at the options, some of the things that you might be looking at is, well, which carrier is maybe going to give me the best proposition um, and maybe the best carrier that's going to give me everything that I need, so that's fixed and mobile. It might be around infrastructure. Okay, so if I wanted to go direct routing or operator connect, what are my infrastru infrastructure requirements? Are there things that I, as a business, need to invest in? Or is this something that I can get from a service provider? Are they going to sell it to me? Are they going to rent it to me? And those are things you need to, to think about. Um, the questions of who's going to handle the number porting, uh, are there any specific uh, PSTN or you know, basic fixed line services that, uh, that you use? Perhaps you run some toll-free uh, services in Belgium. Uh, maybe you've got... Um, specific numbers that you need to be able to call, specific premium rated numbers, uh, those kinds of questions will also force you in one of these, uh, one of these directions. We can't just say that it's a given that, that all of that will be available to us uh, or be, be available to you. Also, uh, just in the point of the calling plans, you need to consider, yeah, the calling plans, not only for fixed, but for mobile too. So Microsoft calling plans offer per minute, and maybe with uh, third-party providers, you might get a better all-round offer, not only for fixed-line calls, but um, you know, also for mobile and international calls. Lastly, on the infrastructure side is redundancy. So now you've said, okay, I need to invest 
in the session border controller and I'm going to rent that from a service provider. The question of, okay, what happens if the session border controller goes down? Uh, and, and, and that might be you need one, you need two. Uh, maybe you're a global organization or a distributed organization and you might want different service, uh, different or might need different session border controllers. These are things that you really need to uh, um, yeah, consider when you're evaluating the options. On the right hand side is we get more specific around the requirements. So do you have specific devices? Are we sure that there's feature parity? That, that maybe when you want to move over to Teams, you've got devices that can actually be connected and how can they be connected? Sometimes they can be connected directly to Teams. Sometimes another gateway or another SPC needs, needs to be added to the uh, 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 you know, added to the uh, solution. Are there any specific ways that you root calls in your organization? Perhaps uh, you have different schedules, um, not only on a global perspective or in terms of coming into a customer service center and you want calls rooted in a specific way at specific times or you want specific messages being played at specific times, but it could also mean the routing for my users. You know, uh, how do we maintain this work-life balance? How can we uh, give a user a single device? And we know that from 5 p.m. or from 6 p.m., we're no longer going to be sending business calls to their mobile phones. You need to just consider what are the advanced call routing requirements that you may have. The next one is, you know, handling hybrid workers. Maybe you've got an environment where not everyone has uh, the full team's uh, experience or the full team's licensing. Um, and so they might need something different. And so something different might mean a separate platform, a separate phone system. And is there capabilities for those phone systems you know, to, to, to talk and integrate with Teams so it provides something that looks, feels, and functions uh, like one solution? The mobile integration, important, uh, important especially in, uh, in, in today, the trends of uh, being a mobile workforce and working, working on the go. Uh, service level agreement, things to think about, who's going to own the team's configuration, not only the initial configuration, but the ongoing management and maintenance. We see a lot of customers really ask this question around, can I give this responsibility to my internal IT teams, and will they be able to do a good enough job in managing our telephony environment amongst all the other IT projects that they have? And do they have experience in the telephony environment? So when I say to them, listen, this is how I want this call flow to work. This is how I want this ring group to be structured. Do they have the level of experience to, uh, to configure and advise around that specific configuration? And then you think about all of these pieces and you say, okay, who's going to manage all of this for us? Uh, so this seems like, I don't know what you think about it, but when I, when I look at it, it's, it's, a lot, it's a lot to think about. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of need, and I think there are even some more points. So these are just some points, but for example, also regarding analytics and monitoring in general, that's also a question. How far do we want to go? And do I need to have a view on all the calls that are being made? And then that comes into the point, and you, need, you say, okay, you have different kind of, uh, let's say, platforms that you need because you have specific requirements that are not filled out with one platform. How can you then centralize and, and uh, make it all together so it's one clear monitoring if anything is possible even at all. So that really brings some questions. Yeah. Absolutely. And I think we've already asked some of these in the previous slide, but I think when you're starting this, um, this journey and starting this investigation, I think the first question that really needs to be asked is, what level of Microsoft licensing do you currently use? Because that answer would either push you in a certain direction or would, be, would become a critical part of building the business case. So perhaps if no one has the required team's licensing to enable telephony, when you start looking at the numbers, you might, and building the business case, you, you might find that, that, that actually uh, you want to reserve the full team's uh, experience for only certain people in the organization and maybe for others uh, who just need a, a cordless phone, as an example. They don't need the full team's experience. And that goes again to the hybrid environment that I was talking about earlier. The point two, which again is in the top list of the things, uh, the questions that we uh, are commonly asked is, um, yeah, you know, who's going to manage it? Uh, and I spoke about uh, whether using an internal IT team is the best decision for the business um, or outsourcing partly, because it doesn't always have to be that I give it to everyone else. 
maybe in the case of Destiny, uh, Destiny can do all the heavy lifting, but internal IT admins and fleet managers have a portal that they can use to make changes on the fly. Changing a schedule, changing a message inside your, uh, your RVR, uh, or your welcome greeting when people call into the organization. You know, but also it's about empowering local users to be able to make changes on the go. Yeah. Same goes for partners as well. So that's also sure. another, another factor that can be in there. You have a customer who can do some really basic things themselves, really not, not nothing too technical, but day to day. And then you have a partner who can help with some more complex, and then you can still see this, and of course, as a third line. Uh, provider for anything that is more complex or just uh, about the, the, the knowledge you have uh, as a customer or maybe as a partner. Yep. Then taking stock of what you currently have is a vital part. We see this time and time again, but sometimes the, uh, um, uh, the panel or the stakeholders making the decisions uh, aren't always as aware of what the business actually uses inside the organization. So taking stock of what you currently have and saying, yeah, this is the way our business is structured. This is the way our call flows are structured. This is how our users connect. Uh, these are the systems that we have integrated. This is how they all work together. Is once you understand that picture and we've now said, this, this is the environment that I need to uh, uh, maintain inside our business uh, is looking at if there's any feature parity between what you currently have and if you had to move over to Teams as a standalone, whether uh, all those needs will be met. It's a big thing that you need to consider, and I spoke about uh, the advanced core routing, uh, support for legacy devices, and any sort of customization or integrations uh, that you might have. And then lastly, and yeah, we spoke about it, uh, but I'll just reiterate it again, is just, um, you know, is, can we achieve this intended outcome with as few stakeholders or as few, su few suppliers um, as possible? Um, and can uh, that supplier offer us uh, a solution where you can accommodate for an environment where maybe not everyone is on Teams? Maybe there are users in the same organization that don't have the required licensing. And this is exactly where Destiny fits in. So if you can imagine anything that's got to do with phone system, uh, that responsibility and that technical capability actually now sits within Destiny. So on the Destiny uh, UCAS Cloud PBX platform. What that means is that we will take Microsoft Teams and just like we have our own PC software, just like we have our own mobile app and we can connect desktop phones and we can have deck devices or deck replacement devices. I think we're going to speak a bit more about that in a, in a couple of minutes. But we just take Microsoft Teams and we put it as an extension on the Destiny Cloud PBX. And so if you think about this Cloud PBX, that is maybe a topic on it by itself, maybe another webinar for us, where we'll talk about the extended capabilities of our Cloud PBX. But 300 plus features, anything that you can think of, or anything that your, uh, the typical business requirements that you have for a phone system is met uh, on the Destiny uh, platform. But then we can enrich and overlay some of these applications that are interesting for organizations today. So that is, as I mentioned, integrations, and it's not only Teams, but it could be integrating with CRM, it's integrating with analytics, um, collaboration or customer experience. And then, yeah, as soon as we have all these different devices connected to the same core, uh, it also means that the experience and the management is uh, quite uniform uh, across all the different users. And so that really makes, uh, makes uh, a big difference. Just to give you another small view of, uh, of, of what this looks like in practice. So if Teams is my soft phone, that means I'm still making calls or I would make calls through Microsoft Teams. It doesn't matter if I'm using Teams on my mobile, whether I'm using Teams on my uh, PC uh, or Teams on the web. Uh, when you make a call out of Teams, goes through the Destiny phone system, the Destiny core routing engine. So Teams is your soft phone, you've got your address book, you can still do your, or you will continue to do your chats and your meetings and you can do call recording, you can transfer calls and park calls, no problem, that stays the same. So users are satisfied. When we take ownership of the core routing, it means that we become the phone system. You don't need to do any of that configuration. You don't need to touch the team's uh, admin center or the team's uh, tenant to do any kind of uh, phone system configuration. 
So that means when we become the phone system, we're going to, you know, we manage and uh, we configure, you know, what do I do with my dial plans? How am I routing calls? What IVRs and auto attendance do I have set up? I need a switchboard operator console, et cetera, et cetera. So we become the call routing engine and your users can still uh, connect to our platform using Microsoft Teams as their soft phone. So very simply put, make and receive calls through uh, Microsoft Teams, irrespective of whether I'm on desk phone, um, desk phone could be as well, but irrespective of whether I'm making a call from Teams on PC, web uh, or mobile, um, our integration extends to all those devices and where the value in some of our UCAS functionality comes in is that if we've got everything coming through one platform, it means that I can do things like being able to pick when I make a call from Teams, should I show my mobile number, should I show my fixed line number, should I show my switchboard number or my central number. Uh, those are all things that you can select on a user basis. The other thing is that the synchronization between Teams and the Destiny phone system also means that at least if you're in a meeting, you're not going to get people calling you. They're not going to be able to call you. Uh, or uh, if you're in a meeting or you're in a call and someone's looking for you and they look inside Microsoft Teams, they will see that you're on a call, even though maybe you're busy on your mobile phone, uh, not necessarily even in a Teams call. So that synchronization and uh, that capability are, uh, is unlocked with the combination of Destiny UCAS and Microsoft Teams. And then what we did speak about is just how we can overlay the Teams environment with some of our value-added applications. I want to, uh, um, we have two solutions in the space. The solution that we speak about today, we call it Teams Connect Premium. So that is how do we bring the dialer into Microsoft Teams. In order to do that, what's important is that you need to take stock of what Microsoft licensing you have. If you are new to Microsoft, there's a new license. You don't automatically get Teams anymore, so you might subscribe to uh, Microsoft 365. But if you want Teams, you have to pay a Teams license. And if you do already have Microsoft Teams and you want to voice enable Microsoft Teams, then you need to add the Teams phone standard license from Microsoft. So a few licenses you need to um, still have from a Microsoft perspective. But if you bring that environment into Destiny, yeah, we simplify the process in terms of the other licenses that you need. So the CRM integration, uh, some of the advanced call routing capabilities, analytics, because then you no longer need those in Teams. You can do that on, on the Destiny platform. We have a solution that's uh, it's generally available for Destiny, but Destiny Belgium, we're obviously productizing at the moment, that's called Teams Connect Advanced. What we will deliver in that is actually just a dialer on our own technology. And we will install that application into Microsoft Teams. So for the user, they will still be able to use Microsoft Teams to make and receive calls, just not with the Teams dialer, but using the Destiny app, which we call Teams Connect Advanced. The big benefit here is that you no longer need any Microsoft licensing or any Microsoft phone system licenses. So if you have Microsoft Teams already, you'll be able to install the Destiny application, not worry about any other licenses. And what we'll do is we'll give you the data and the capability to make and receive calls uh, through our platform. So that's going to be a big one, not only for organizations that aren't maybe ready or, or for, for various reasons uh, uh, don't want to roll out Teams for everyone, you can have a blended environment. So maybe you've got some users using Teams Connect Premium, some users uh, uh, running Teams Connect Advanced, and who knows, maybe even some users uh, prefer the Destiny applications. And before I hand over to uh, R2, um, I just want to quickly mention the mobile integration uh, because Destiny is mobile first um, and we've got a really nice proposition, not only in our own technology for the mobile services that we can deliver, but when we look at what that proposition does and how that contributes towards a Teams environment, uh, there are a couple of uh, really nice things that that uh, delivers to a user. And so I did mention before, but you can select in Teams when I make a call, should I, what number should I display? It doesn't always mean if I make a call for my mobile that I have to display my mobile number. I can display my fixed line number, hide my caller ID or uh, an office number. We can also route calls. 
uh, automatically based on your present state. I think that's probably best demonstrated. So we'll leave that for 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 R two. Uh, but really, um, uh, you know, it means uh, yeah. Uh, depending on what my present state is inside Teams, do not disturb, unavailable, in a call, etc. What do I do with phone calls at that time? Um, it also means that because I've got Teams. Um, and uh, uh, um, uh, all telephony running through the Destiny UK's platform. That means I'm now in my analytics system, I have a full view of all calls, fixed line calls, mobile calls, and even Teams meetings in one analytics platform. And then lastly, is we have our CRM integration, where our CRM integration extends even to calls that you receive on your mobile phone. So maybe you run an environment where you need to bowl for calls, and you want to improve the way that you do that process, well, if you have a customer that calls you on your mobile phone or you call a customer from your mobile phone and you have a consultation, if you have the integration with our CRM, there's a good possibility that you'll be able to track and do a timestamp on that phone call automatically in your CRM or billing system. So when you make a call from your mobile phone, you can already bill your customers for that call. And maybe you don't want to bill, but you want to be able to report on how much time you spent engaging with certain customers. So even our CRM integration extends to calls that you receive on your mobile phone. But then, of course, if I'm, all, if I'm a, um, in the professional services industry and I'm, I need to consult with customers and I need to call them from my mobile phone, but I don't want to show them, uh, I don't want to open my mobile number. Yeah. You make a call from your mobile phone, but you display your fixed line number. These are all possibilities with the, uh, with the Destiny uh, Teams integration. And maybe another nice application is that you touched upon it briefly is the deck replacement. So uh, I think most of you probably still know the deck phones, so the, the developers, as we say in Dutch, eh? so just the, the cordless phones, eh? the, the gear sets and all that. Um, uh, it's it's a nice solution, but the problem is, of course, yeah, you need to have infrastructure, and then it's a different infrastructure. You have, for example, you have your Wi-Fi. You then also have your uh, all your decked infrastructure, which you need to maintain and all that. And also, the decked handsets can cost a lot of money if they break, or you need to have some expensive roadless devices, and even then, they might break. Um, uh, what we can do with the mobile integration technology, we you just have a simple SIM card, and that SIM card can only call. Uh, via a fixed number. So it can receive and make calls from and to uh, uh, your fixed number. So no mobile calls, no data calls. But the cool thing is you can put it in a simple device, uh, an old Nokia, so to speak. It, it works actually. Huh? Um, and then you can just use that as a decked device. So that's what we call the decked replacement. You just give it to people who are on construction sites in a, in a factory environment, these kind of things. And then you have just a cheap phone, can be 50 euros, as simple as can be. Put a SIM card in it, and then you have a user which can call over the mobile network instead of having to mm. use different kind of infrastructure. A really nice application. And then maybe just uh, uh, separate to that is is maybe not on the older devices, but on the newer devices, we also support voice over LTE, have a LTE or voice over Wi-Fi. So so even even if you're in an environment now, you want to use a, a, a debt replacement device, but maybe you don't have good mobile coverage in that environment. Well, if you've got a good Wi-Fi infrastructure or a uh, Volti uh, signal, uh, you'll be able to make and, uh, make and receive calls through that network too. Yeah. So it's a very uh, good proposition. So on that note, what I'd like to do is I'd uh, like to hand over to you uh, because sometimes it's not only about hearing the story, it's about seeing the story. So seeing is believing as it is. Seeing is believing. I'll uh, quickly share my screen. There we go. So I have actually a couple of things to show you. Uh, I can't show everything we have at Destiny. I would love to, but then I'll, I'll need to take two hours, I think, at least, at the very least, uh, which I would, but uh, I'm not allowed to take too much time today. Um, so I have, for example, a regular user here. So um, a regular Teams user, it's a bit like uh, Mitchell showed just then. Um, and I don't have any special phone license, so I'm just a regular user. I see here in the calls menu, uh, you see actually I just have some uh, internal Teams calls, but then I don't have telephony calls. So I can't make my phone calls from here. Um, now, if I switch over then to the user, we do have it. So with our Teams Connect Premium solution, um, then yes, we do have the phone license, but we can also use this to make phone calls. For a user, this is just a regular Teams phone environment. So as simple as can be and as it should be also. Um, but the only thing is, as Mitchell said, in the back end is just connected to our 
uh, telephony system. Um, so for the end user, it's exactly the same kind of user experience they're used, or maybe not used, but they can easily use in Teams, uh, which is very nice. Um, but in the back end, of course, with all the extra added benefits that we have, like the mobile integration, like the CRM integration, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, the more advanced call routing, these kind of, uh, these kind of things. So that's really nice. This does not change with us, right? so that's really the same. What do you what you do get is an extra plugin, and with this plugin you can control a couple of things as a user uh, based on the, the phone uh, or the phone environment, let's say. And so our our uh, PBX environment. So for example, I have a couple of uh, I have a couple of groups. Right? So I have uh, two groups here of which I'm a member, two test groups, and I can just log in and out of these groups. Uh, for example, here. I can select my caller ID, huh? so uh, now it's on Office fixed, huh? but I can also place it on a fly Office mobile, I can do it anonymously, maybe the switchboard number, et cetera, et cetera. The cool thing is, so I can also take my, because of the mobile integration, I can select my mobile number and then I can just go to the call tab, so type a number out or select someone to call via, via phone. Uh, and then they will see my mobile number as well. So that's really to show that it's in the back end, completely our system taking care. But for me as a user, it's just like I just have the phone system of Teams, uh, which is really quite uh, quite nice. Also, voicemails you can see, you can manage them. Uh, that's quite uh, uh, self-explanatory. But then the cool thing, uh, at least for me, I think is the coolest thing about this uh, about this plugin. It's really the status synchronization. Uh, um, Mitch uh, talked about it a little bit already. But uh, what you can do is. Um, we, we have all a, a calendar, uh, we, we have our agenda, um, for example, and I think we all, or almost all of us, we use, for example, Outlook to plan everything. Right? So if you have vacation, you plan it in there. If you have meetings, you plan it in there, et cetera, et cetera. Um, Google or Teams, doesn't matter, you plan them in there. So that is more or less, or it should be the single source of truth for your status and your planning. Uh, in reality, what do we see? You have a phone environment, a PBX, and you have the Teams, uh, uh, environment or the Outlook or the Office environment, just in a broad term, uh, and they're completely separate from each other. And then you're, for example, in a Teams meeting, and then you constantly get uh, annoyed by calls coming on your uh, on your fixed phone uh, or even your mobile phone if you don't want that. Um, which, of course, is not very very. Um, uh, it's not something you would like to have. So what we have is actually synchronization between the two where we take uh, the office environment as a single source of truth in terms of present state, um, and then the, the telephony solution of Destiny follows that, uh, it follows suit. Um, so for example, just to give here, you can see them already, the mapping. So uh, there's regular available status in Teams, so when you don't have anything to do, of course you have something to do, which are available for talking. Um, then it goes over to the available state, a similar available state in our, in our telephony solution. But some, for example, uh, I just come out of vacation, um, and when my status was vacation because I was out of office um, in, uh, in in office, I landed in my calendar. Huh? So the purple box, if you can remember that. Um, then also my telephony status went to vacation automatically. So I didn't need to change anything. I didn't need to plan it in automatically. Followed. That's one thing. So this is the present state, but also the caller state is also synchronized, and that's even two way. So what does that mean? If I'm, for example, I, I take myself when I'm making a call with my fixed number, for example, or I'm using the Teams environment, it doesn't matter. Um, then in the telephony solution of Destiny, yes, I will be making a call because I'm using the telephony system. Um, but I'm also in Teams. If someone goes to my profile, they will see in a call like I was in a regular Teams call, uh, which is not the case. Also the other way around. So if I'm um, if I'm in a, in a Teams call or a Teams meeting or a conference call or whatever you want to call it, um, then also if someone looks at my present state on the telephony system, then they will see that I'm in a call, uh, which is really quite nice because whether you are in a call on Teams or on your own telephony, let's say, it should not make a difference. You're in a call, so why should you the other one? Uh, why should one uh, not override the other? Let's say. So that's really something we just unify them by using the office as the single sort of truth, but then also uh, synchronizing the the caller state. Let's say. So that's really quite uh, quite nice. Maybe also something else uh, I can uh, show you. It's just a quick sneak preview of the uh, uh, the Teams Connect Advanced uh, so uh, uh, license or the product which uh, Mitchell talked about. So if you um, do not have a phone license, because for example, you have E3, uh, Microsoft uh, E5, it has an included standard, but if you have E3, which is usually what we see in, uh, in uh, SMB environments, there 
if you don't have a license, well, you can either buy it, of course. But then if you if you um, uh, say, okay, it's, it's too much, it's around six to seven euros, depending on the pricing, uh, per month per user, just for that phone instance. Well, if you um, if it's financially maybe too big of a, of a yeah a demand, let's say, then we do have indeed on that plugin, which is uh, coming soon. So I'll just quickly show it, but I didn't show you anything if they ask. So here, yeah, then you record it. <laughs> so um, you can see it here. It's pretty much the same thing. It's a dialer uh, with some history and all that, but then not the native team dialer as you would see with the phone system or with the phone license, but just a, a, a self-made uh, dialer in this case. So really, that's that's basically it for the user. For the end user, it's just that simple. So you don't see too much, um, uh, too too much special things, and it, it should be it should be very transparent and straightforward for the user. It's mostly in the back end that the real magic happens. Yeah. So if Mitchell, for example, calls me uh, on my number, so go ahead. Then you can see, for example, Mitchell's calling me. Just to give you an idea, I also on my mobile phone, as if Mitchell would call, be calling my mobile number, it shows my, it really shows a, a native dialer call, which is right, quite nice with the mobile integration. But you also see this pop-up, right? And down because Mitch stopped calling. But then you see our CRM integration, which is also quite nice, I would say. In this case, we have actually two, and uh, you can have multiple. That's the cool thing about it as well. Uh, so we use both HubSpot and Dynamics here in uh, Destiny. Uh, um, and you might use whatever you like to use, or do Salesforce, you name it. Huh? Um, and then it will do the lookups for actually the uh, for these uh, user or for the incoming incoming number uh, in those CRM systems that you have the integration with. And you see, for example, here in Dynamics, it recognizes the number as Jack Sparrow. It's actually not uh, registered in our in our. PBX, the number is really just because it sees it in the CRM, where it should be because that's a single source of truth for your CRM uh, data or for your customer data. So you see Jack Sparrow and Mitchell Barker at gmail.com with some information, and then the account that is actually linked to it. I can just click that, and then it opens the account in Dynamics. Uh, same thing for HubSpot, um, where you can also, for example, in this case, make a, a small note. And then if I save the note, then you will see in HubSpot actually, OK, there was a call at this point. Um, uh, and then the note that you actually wrote with the call to say, okay, this was about blah, 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 doesn't matter. So that's really quite nice. And these are just a, co a couple of simple examples. You can really go further with this kind of integration as well with different kind of CRM packages, over 60 at the moment, actually, uh, and ticketing systems. And I think one of the biggest challenges that, that we have from an efficiency point of view is I have a telephone call and then I'm expected to capture that detail in CRM. So now I need to move from one system to the other. And then I have to go and search and find the customer contact and then decide, okay, am I having to log this inside the customer CRM record or the company, well, sorry, the, the caller CRM record or maybe the company CRM record? Um, yeah, but you're having to juggle between different applications. Yeah. And so if we're saying and we agree that actually all data needs to be in CRM, it means that maybe when I receive a call, I want to quickly be able to create a record in CRM, which we can do directly from our pop-up. Um, or you've also got the flexibility to say, okay, when I can link from my pop-up, what do I want to open? Do I want to open the company that the user belongs to or that the caller belongs to? Or maybe I want to open up just the contact record. Uh, because I want to get more context around who this customer is. I want to be able to get quick access to their contacts uh, or contracts, uh, their service level agreement, uh, who they last uh, spoke to when they called in, uh, a history of that communication. Um, so having that as an integrated requirement um, uh, is definitely bringing uh, a lot of uh, a lot of value and efficiency gains for our users. Yeah, indeed. Yeah, there are two major advantages, I would say, of the system. Uh, one is, of course, just internal efficiency, not having to look up your customer, really saving some time. So you can serve more customers in the same amount of time, so that's just more efficient. But also, just for the customer experience point of view, if, you have, if you're a customer and you call and you have to already wait long, that's one thing. Yeah? Um, and then also have to give your name or your customer number, etc. Et that's not really customer friendly. Mm -hmm. Here it just pops up. You know the person, you know which company they are from, and you can just really say hello, Mr. Yeah. Uh, Jack from uh, from a test account. Huh? So that, that's really quite nice as a customer, the customer experience. And of course, as we all know, in this day and age, the biggest differentiator as a, as a company or as a service company is really in the customer experience itself and the customer delight. Let's yeah. Say. So talking about that, what about uh, the caller journey? Because that's always uh, <laughs> that's always uh, 
the best way to prepare for the call that's coming in? Yeah, exactly. That's a good question. So you can hear, see here, for example, the call journey. Huh? Now, okay, it was just ringing for today, but if you have a customer who had called multiple times already today, you can nicely see that in this as well. So you already know to prepare, okay, this customer has called multiple times and it asks some basic, maybe some basic questions uh, because they already have uh, uh, given that, that information. So that really helps as well to, to contextualize how to, how to speak with your customer or, or, or a vendor or whatever kind of contact person yeah. you have. And or maybe you're unlucky number four, so you're the fourth person the customer has to speak to, and so it's good to know. The call came in through our customer support center, it was then transferred to Larry, uh, customer spoke to Larry, it was then transferred to Jane, and eventually it's, uh, it's by you. So you know before, uh, before you handle that call, what you uh, need to prepare for. Yeah, then you just need to answer with, sorry, as a first, as a first word. But you, at least you can answer uh, by the first name. Yeah, exactly, exactly. So that's the customer experience you want to get. So that's really on, on the user side, a couple of examples how, how we can use this. Huh? Um, of course, that's one part. Huh? How then can we manage that? And for example, more as an admin, how does it work in the back end? I won't show too many details. Uh, but to give you an idea how easy it is to manage, actually, uh, for example, the Teams integration specifically, but also just in general, the phone system that is behind it. Um, so let me quickly switch my screen here to uh, this. And this is our platform. Let me put away the pop-up. So this is our, our platform. This is our backend platform. So here you can manage your phone system, the Destiny phone system, and the users will never see this. This is really something purely backend for the one who manages it. So it can be either you as an IT admin, uh, or just as an IT person at the company, but also a partner, of course, can help manage yep. this or manage this completely for you. Um, once again, also Destiny can do that. And so that's the whole question of who does what. Um, but the cool thing is, for example, for the Teams telephony, I have it here. It's one of the add-ons that uh, the environment has. Um, if I go to the configuration, I'll show you how simple it is. So as a first step, you just need to have some admins, some Teams admins who can uh, link to the organization with uh, uh, the Teams organization or the office organization with, uh, with the phone system. That's it. That's just a one sign setup thing. And then you have the users. Now for the users, it can be actually, you, maybe you don't even need to go in here. Huh? Why? Because as standard, if you have, for example, a user, I'm uh, just giving an example, I put them on at destiny.be, and I have that user in the office environment. And I have that same user that is being created in our teams, uh, sorry, in our destiny environment, then automatically it will put the link between the two. So it will, it will automatically my uh, phone uh, user in teams will be linked to the, uh, to the, to my yeah, calling user, let's say in teams, which is really quite a uh, uh, zero touch, let's say. Um, and then every time you create a new user, it will do the same. It's uh, that standard, but if you want to do it manually, because, uh, Either you don't want all users to have automatically the Teams integration or the full-blown Teams integration, and maybe you want some users to just use a detector placement profile. You want maybe some other users to have a, um, to, to use the, the Destiny software, or whatever, it doesn't matter, um, and they don't need the Teams integration. Or if you have different naming conventions between your uh, phones, uh, the telephony system of Destiny, and then the phone uh, environment or the Teams environment in general, the office environment, then yeah, also then you can just use a manual linking system and then you can say, for example, have a user here, but your mom with this number, and then it's for a moment not connected, but then I can choose, for example, connect. And it's really as easy as just selecting the, uh, the, the, the matching Teams account in the office environment. That's really just it. I won't look further because then it's actually activated just to show how simple it is. And you don't even need to use it. You don't need need to use this if you have really the linking between uh, between the two automatically based on the name just copies it so that's one part but of course that's only just one part of our phone system i can quickly show some other points but uh, we're running out of time because i think we have quite a bit of questions to go through as well uh, or at least a couple um, so for example here you see also the users uh, let me just select maybe my user and this is just my user just with my credentials etc etc um, with my number, this is all a test environment, so there's no, uh, um, no real private information here. Um, I have a couple of groups where I'm a part of, and so we have different kind of groups as well, going from some simple hunt groups to really advanced call distribution groups, and more call center based groups. Um, so uh, also devices, I can manage devices, I can add some devices. And now I don't have any third party devices, but I can easily add a device as well. You can manage devices in the uh, SMP as well. 
Um, so really desk phones, uh, zero touch provisioning, really changing the configuration in a visual way, even without having to do it on the phone itself. So that's really quite, uh, quite uh, interesting. Um, yeah, I think when it comes to SMP, it's really about, we speak about us being the core routing engine. So how do you access as a fleet manager, as an IT manager, as an IT support uh, a company or a partner that's delivering these services to customers? What interface and what application do you use to enable the configuration? And so the power behind what we deliver is the seamless um, uh, provisioning process between Teams users and the telephony. A platform, um, but then of course this is the portal that a customer or a partner would go into. Uh, sorry, not a customer, but this is the portal that a partner would go into, or the support uh, support company to uh, to make some of the phone system configuration. Yep, indeed. And maybe some last thing before we go to the questions, or we continue. Um, it's for example here you have a call group, uh, so that's an advanced call distribution group. Uh, Destiny Two is the name. What's in a name? And then here you see, for example, just as a basic first thing, okay, what are the opening hours? Now it's just completely twenty four seven open, but you can put it to okay nine to five, and then maybe on the Wednesday it's only to four. Just giving an example, and then a week is closed. That's a standard thing, and then based on that, you can okay have the correct interaction. If someone calls outside of the hours, then maybe it goes to a prompt, it goes to a voicemail, etc. It goes to a failover group. Um, you can make some devi deviating entries like public holidays, you know, Christmas, you're not uh, available, or a closing week, maybe you have as a company. Um, you can then also have some things like okay, if a call has been waiting for too long, and what do you do? Do you forward it or not? And no forward, they just keep waiting uh, when no agents are available. And so, um, uh, how many queues at the same time or, or calls in the queue can you have at the same time if, as from there are five then you can do maybe nothing or of course then make a forward or uh, forward it to a voicemail box for an available group anything like that the members you can manage in here as well so you can add them you can do it really just uh, on, a, on a skill based level actually uh, on a priority based level and you can log them in and out give them supervisor rights or not so they can uh, manage the group themselves these kind of things Maybe one last point, which is also important, uh, prompts. So, of course, you have quite a bit of prompts in a, in a telephony environment. For example, if someone comes into the sales queue uh, or support queue or whatever kind of queue, they call into the general number, they go through a choice, a menu choice, already quite a bit of prompts. And then they enter, for example, in this distribution group. And then the first thing you hear is that prompt being played. You can also not play prompt, but for customer experience or point of view, you would like to use that. Huh? And then now in this case, there is no prompt, but you can say, okay, I want to just select one of the pre-recorded uh, prompts we have already in, in the environment, but you can say, I'll, I'll add a new prompt. So if you do that, so you can just give it a name. doesn't really matter, test, test. Add a new language. Let's say for this one is just uh, uh, Dutch, so it's NLBE. Um, and then you have three options. So either you just uh, upload uh, a WAV file, just an audio file, uh, that's straightforward or you can also just uh, immediately uh, record and so you can just with your headset and a microphone or whatever uh, you can record actually a new message or you can use text to speech which is also quite nice um, you just select then again the language and then you have a couple of voice models that we use um, and then you can just type in the voice uh, for example that is a test convert the text to voice and then um, you can just use it like that. So uh, okay, you can play it, uh, you won't hear the song, so I won't do it, but it's really quite nice. It's not a bad uh, voice, if you ask me. Um, and that's it, and then you can just make, play that. So if you have, for example, oh, I forgot we have Christmas, I need to have a prompt there when people call that they know, yeah. okay, they're not open, you can quickly make that, it's really yeah. quite handy. And it's especially good for support centers, so if something happens in your uh, network environment uh, or you need to get a message out to everyone, so people calling into your organization could hear that mass distribution message and not have to uh, then be speaking to uh, an agent to relay that information. So yep. this really gives you the tools to uh, to do that uh, on the fly. Indeed. So we quickly touch uh, touch on analytics. Uh, unfortunately, the time yeah. is really uh, really um, uh, caught up on us. Um, so maybe we can just yeah. I'm going to get us onto the next slide. Yeah, indeed. So I'd love to show this as well, but we don't really have the time. So we already prepared the slide just for this. Huh? Uh, if you have any other questions or things you would like to see, just please reach out. Um, I'm me or someone of the team or someone else can is happily going to answer your questions and show some more. Uh, but we only have the limited time of today. 
Um, but just to, to be, be give you an idea, we talked about it already briefly, a distant analytics, so that's really a platform we use um, to, to gather all the data, and all the data I'm talking about, fixed calls, I'm talking about mobile calls, and also, as Mitchell said, also everything that is happening in Teams, so the one-on-one -on -one calls, the conference calls, you all have it in one platform, so you, all the collaboration you do, be it on whatever platform, uh, real-time collaboration, let's say, um, it's all it's all logged in there, which is really nice. Then you can make some really advanced reports. You can make some weekly reports, monthly reports. You can have a real-time dashboards, as you see here on, on the on this slide. Uh, for example, for indeed a support environment to know okay what is the workflow. Um, and uh, a cool thing as well, you have a Power BI connector, so you can just inject the data all via Power BI, so you can uh, make it together with your possible other KPI dashboards that you have in the air. So it doesn't have to be our own reporting and, uh, um, and dashboards. Of course, we have uh, reporting and visualizations, different visualizations for those reports. We've got scheduled reports. We have dashboards uh, that are fully customizable. So all analytics across all communication data from one platform. That's the key thing. And if you don't mind, CRM Connect, if you want to quickly just touch on some key points there, and then we can... Uh, yeah, I think I, I, I talked about most of it already. So it's really a quite a nice system. It's it's kind of middleware we have. Uh, without too many details, we can integrate any kind of solution. Uh, so um, we already have over over sixty integrations. Uh, so and you can that can go from a simple integration uh, like just a pop up with the the, the customer. Uh, contact and then you can click it open and but it really goes also into uh, registering the call with the time and a note and, and other kind of information in, into the CRM or ticketing system directly from the pop-up which is really really quite nice. All right um, yeah thank you very much for that uh, I don't think I need to uh, invite you to ask questions I'm having a look at the questions I think uh, the last <laughs> check was 28 29 questions so thank you for the questions thank you for the comments and remarks uh, yeah we'd love to uh, uh, love to answer them for you and, and and get back to them I think maybe just to uh, really summarize what we've spoken about today and destiny's role uh, to play in uh, in the Microsoft ecosystem is that you know, of course, reminder, this is our own technology. It's not third-party technology. This is tried and tested and used, uh, used worldwide. Our proposition is around giving you something that is easy to use and easy to integrate. We will show you and more than happy to demonstrate uh, on a one-to-one -one basis exactly what that process flow looks like. Uh, but I remember, our mission is to make business communication simple for users and simple for employees, or simple for users and simple for customers. Um, we are mobile first, so you will see this, the, the, the theme of mobile integration in all of our solutions. And in a lot of cases, the level of mobile integration is, is, uh, is something that um, you know, is really delivered in a, in a unique way. And then, of course, Destiny being the one-stop one shop, the all-in-one communications platform, the all-in-one service provider, secure connectivity, business communications, um, and, and of course, uh, um, uh, our role to play in your organization with it, with, and within our partner communities you know, could, could really be um, uh, yeah, explored in, 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 great, in great detail. So we thank you very much for joining us. I'm going to give you an opportunity to scan the code. Um, we will uh, have a chance to win uh, one of our jerseys, the Lotto Destiny jerseys, or as I mentioned, the Bongo gift voucher. If I'm not mistaken, I think that this code will be active for the next few days. I think it's three days, three, three to five days. Um, so good luck. You can expect to hear from us in, uh, in a couple of days, and hopefully you're the winner. And unfortunately, I think we're out of time for questions. Um, but I think let's make a point of going through them over the next day or two, and we'll certainly get back to uh, each and every one of you. Thanks for your participation. Thanks for your attendance. Uh, and hopefully we've given you some insight today and we look forward to engaging with you uh, hopefully in the future. Thank you Thank very you. much. All right.